Joining us now on the debate in Austin, Texas, Susanna Breslin, freelance journalist and blogger. In Boston, Massachusetts, Jacqueline Friedman, executive director at Women, Action and the Media. And just a little down the line in Newton, Massachusetts, Gail Dines, professor of sociology and women's studies at Wheelock College and the author of Pornland. And with us here in studio, Heather Jarvis, co-founder of The Slut Walk, and Kate McPherson, professor of history and women's studies at York University. It's good to welcome five new guests to our program tonight. Happy to have uh, you here in the studio and our guests in Points Beyond in the United States. We also want to tell our audience that we are doing this program today because uh, we have something called a pitch widget on our website. People can suggest their ideas for programs. And a couple of people did suggest that we ought to do this story because it's in the news and it's fairly, you know, it's an important story. So here we go. This is how it was reported in the York University newspaper, The Excalibur. On January 24th, a campus safety information session was held at Osgoode Hall where members from York Security and two male officers from Toronto Police Division 31 handed out safety tips to community members. Rhonda Bessner, who attended the session, remembered being surprised by what the officer suggested to women. Quote, one of the safety tips was for women not to dress like sluts. He said something like, I've been told I shouldn't say this, and then he uttered the words, said Besner. Okay, Heather, based on that, you decided to create something called a slut walk. Explain your thinking. Uh, we did. It, uh, this might have been one police officer and one comment, as you put it, but this is not a new line of thinking. Uh, this thinking is unfortunately everywhere, and I've faced it a lot of times. And the idea that somehow people bring sexual assault onto themselves by dressing for it, or what they do with their lives, or who they are, is ludicrous. Study after study, statistics after statistics show that Unfortunately, sexual assault is an equal opportunity crime, and it happens across the board. So we were livid and wanted to do something constructive. Uh, so we thought, let's go tell the Toronto Police that an apology that they were going to give is not enough. And before we knew it, Slut Walk was getting hundreds and then thousands of people and was spreading across Canada, okay. and it's been a huge success. Stop there, because we're going to unpack some of those comments in just a moment. Kate, when you first heard about this, what did you think? I thought it was... a. Uh Great creative twist on an old theme. What's the old theme? Well, the old theme is that uh, for 100, 100 and some years, uh, women and other victims of sexual violence have insisted that uh, being attacked, being harassed, being assaulted is not their fault. And it guess it's kind of surprising that that line of thinking has persisted this long into now the 21st century. What did you find kind of new and creative about this that you liked? Well, I liked the fact that uh, like other successful radicalizing campaigns. The organizers took a word that is uh, considered problematic, is usually used in an insulting, demeaning way, and reclaimed it, reappropriated it. And I think it does two things. One is it obviously attracts media attention and, and widespread attention. And I think it also speaks to unpacking the hypocrisy uh, that persists around women's sexuality and other forms of sexuality. I'm going to follow up on the, on the word itself a little bit later. But first, I want to go to Jacqueline uh, in uh, Boston, because I think uh, you're going to be appearing at a slut walk tomorrow in Boston, are you not? Tomorrow in Boston, I'm so excited. Yeah, they're expecting two, 3,000 people uh, to march in, in tomorrow's slut walk in Boston. What appeals to you about this idea? I really love the sense of solidarity. I love the sense of humor of it, the, the street performance nature of it, the, the dresses and the signs and all of that. But <clears throat> what really appeals to me about the slut walk is the idea that if one of us and certainly many of us are, but if one of us is being harmed by the use of the word slut as a weapon, we are all going to stand up and say, if you're going to call one of us that, you have to call all of us that. If one of us is a slut, then every one of us, regardless of how we dress or what we do with our bodies and our lives, is a slut. And we're going to all stand together. It's an act of solidarity. Susanna, is the slut walk coming to Austin, Texas? Um, I've heard it's coming in June, I believe. And yes. what's your view about that? Um, I, I probably will not be in attendance at the Slut Walk. How come? Uh, this year. Well, when I heard about it, I think I had a sort of eye-rolling response. Um, I think sexual assault is something that should be taken seriously. I think that creating something called a Slut Walk is um, absurd and um, non-productive. I don't really see the point of it other than creating a kind of spectacle. Um, and I think if people want to go about change, reclaiming the word slut and calling that empowerment is not the way to get there. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> some eyebrows have gone up in the studio here who want to respond, but first let's hear what Gail thinks about this uh, at Wheelock College. Gail, what's your view on it? Well, I think we definitely need to change the, the conversation around the victimization of women by men. And what nobody's talking about here is that we should really put the focus on the men because they actually perpetrate this violence against women. And I think what we need to think about is the concept of slut. You cannot reclaim a word that was never yours. Women never define the term slut for themselves. This is a term thrown at them by men in a culture that gives rise to the very same violence that causes women to be victimized. So I would argue that we need to change behavior. We need to change the way women are thought of. We need to change the way that women's sexuality is thought of. But to buy into the concept of slut and to buy into the same ideology that produces the idea that women are sluts. I mean, where is the male equivalent of this? Where is a discussion about male violence against women? So what I would like to see is maybe a perp walk and have perpetrators come out so we can start educating them and we can start educating the police about what it means for violence against women and how, what, however women dress, however they look, however age they are, it has absolutely nothing to do with the violence that men perpetrate. Okay, I, I know we are going to get into some conversation about the word itself, but first of all, absurd and non-productive, Heather, were the use, was the description used by uh, Susanna Breslin. You want to comment on that? Uh, I find it rather interesting that uh, thousands of people who have stopped being silent and have started joining in action in their streets with so many other thousands of people is suddenly deemed absurd and to be said that we're not taken seriously I would challenge that to say that we're not just a bunch of slutty women walking through the street and anybody who suggests that is clearly misinformed we There's have no been such fighting thing as a slutty woman uh, there's no such thing as slutty women. That's a male invention. We don't have to respond to that because it doesn't exist in reality. But I want to respond to that. Queer is another example of a word that was thrown at a community of people that was not theirs to begin with and was made to damage them. And this is a word that we have seen has been reclaimed. I use this word to describe myself and it is damn empowering. And for me to call myself whatever language I want, if I find it empowering, for somebody else to say that that's not a right choice when this is my choice, I find that to be problematic. Susanna, you want to come back on that? I just hear all this feminist studies rhetoric about reclaiming and empowering, and it's just, it's so privileged. And I just think of, you know, the reality of sexual assault, and it doesn't have to do with reclaiming anything or anything related to empowerment. And I just think this is a very complicated uh, dialogue that that is more for the people who stand on pedestals to promote it than the actual bringing about of change. This is like Susanna, a pony show. So Susanna, as a I, of I've had the. Go ahead, let's, let's hear uh, uh, Jacqueline first and then uh, Heather come back. I, I've had the privilege of being a, a, a sexual assault survivor. Uh, it's not as much of a privilege as you might think. Uh, and the fact that we are standing together and saying, these words are not going to have power anymore. That's what the slut walk is about. It's not about empowering women to make a particularly prescripted decision about our sexuality. It's about saying we can make whatever decisions about our sexuality with what, that we want, and your words are no longer going to be an excuse. It's actually about say rejecting that slut as a weapon. Okay, stand it's about rejecting that, but that slut would say, as a that's weapon. That's not what's... Hang on, hang, stand sorry, by, everybody. Jacqueline, we're going go for We're going to go for Heather first, and then, uh, and then Gail will come back to you. Okay, fine, thank you. Again, as a sexual assault survivor myself, t you know, we've gone from calling them victims to calling them survivors. This in and of itself has been a reclaiming of agency, a reclaiming of power and strength, and a reclaiming of being a survivor of sexual assault does not have to define who I am as a victim. And this is about language, this is about taking these events and these experiences very seriously. And a lot of our campaign has been around saying, society seems to teach us to not get raped, and we want to put the emphasis where, emphasis where it belongs, onto teaching people more about consent and how to not rape. Because unfortunately, that's a bit confusing for some people. Okay, Gail. Okay, so let's get into the real world here and let's talk about words and the meaning of words in a specific context. What well, the studies show that if girls or young women get labeled a slut, it has incredible ramifications for the rest of their life. Women who are and girls who are labeled sluts have more chance of low self-esteem, eating disorders, self-mutilation, alcoholism and drug abuse. Now, 
Uh, let me tell you, you can have white privileged women or college educated women say, I can reclaim the concept of slut. But the women I work with and the girls I work with, often girls of colour and women of colour, they can't walk around with the label slut plastered on them because they have to pay a price for not being a sort of privileged white woman. And I think it's very important to re realise that a lot of feminism has been hijacked from women who are now reaching their late 30s, early 40s, who are claiming to speak for younger women. Okay, and I Gail, go across the country. Let me jump in here, though, for a sec. Let me jump in for a sec. Because how, <laughs> how, is, how is what you're describing different from, say, the heterosexual young boy in a school who gets labeled a queer, and they're trying to kind of reclaim, they're trying to take the power out of that sting in the same way? Sounds like to me they're trying to take the power out of the sting in the same way. Okay, there's actually a very big difference because you have a gay community where gay and lesbians and queer youths, for example, mix with each other, get intimate relationships with each other. In reality, young heterosexual women have to develop intimate re sexual relationships with men who think they're sluts. And do you think for one minute that saying, I'm reclaiming the concept of slut, is going to have any impact on an 18, 19 year old boy who, by the way, is now brought up on pornography as his major form of sex education? Pornographers use the word slut all the time. And let me tell you they don't mean anything are empowering about that. Okay, Some of let's, them actually do. Let, let's make sure we understand the word. Um, Kate, define it for us. <laughs> well, I'm not a linguist, but uh, culturally it refers to a woman who is sexually promiscuous. And it's always a woman. Well, no, in fact, sometimes uh, uh, boys hurl it at each other as uh, a way to sort of call out or curtail or sometimes celebrate excessively sexually active young men. But is it, it's intended to be pejorative in the case of a woman, but it's kind of laudatory in the case of a man? Not necessarily. I think, no. I think uh, sometimes uh, uh, boys and young men name each other as that. Um, but certainly it, it has traditionally been a gender-specific word aimed at women who are sexually promiscuous. I'd like to point out that the history of slut actually started, its definition has already changed, it started to be again sent to, to be mainly upon women, about women who were untidy is the original definition. Hmm. Uh, Susanna, and I would actually like to yeah, add on that further, that, uh, that slut is often used just to target women or girls who step outside of very narrowly defined lines for behavior. That a lot of times girls in high school or even younger who get called sluts, uh, you see these slut lists being produced in high schools and junior high schools. It, does, it doesn't have anything to do with what they are or aren't doing with their sexual behavior. It's a word that's used to Whoops, we have a little She's technical police, problem there. Let me, let me just, uh, we just lost a bit of our line there, I think, to Boston. We'll try and get it back. But in the meantime, Susanna, let me try this with you. Uh, you understand Heather's intention here is to try to take a word that harms and take it back so that it takes the sting and the power out of it. Do you have any objection to that? Well, this is nothing new under the sun. I mean, Susie Bright's been doing this since the 70s. Uh, we had a song where we reclaimed bitch. And I, I don't, you know, the fact, and Madonna, you know, did this in the 80s. And now it's like, oh, slut walk, my God, we've reinvented the wheel. This time we'll reclaim our sexuality and overthrow the patriarchy. And it's like, well, it hasn't been working for 30 years. Is it really going to work this time? And is the goal here to go from victim to survivor to slut? That's the, that's the jewel in the crown. Can we follow up on that, Heather? Because you did mention there is a distinction in your mind between being described as a survivor versus a victim. What's the distinction in your view? Um, for me personally, and from going off of the, the literature I've found and talking to the survivors I've spoken to, is victim is a word where really it's about being victimized. It's a very weak sort of acknowledgement of a position, but it feels weak. It feels like, just as the word describes, being victimized. And by people claiming being a survivor, it's that they have lived through this and they are moving beyond it. And it is not holding them back and it's a more empowering word than victim. So this has been going on for a lot of years. And I do want to recognize that this work has been going on far before Slut Walk, and we have tried to acknowledge that we are not the new, we, we are not the first to do this. Language has, is constantly in shift. These efforts have been going on for decades. Gail, would you agree there is some significance to the distinction that Heather is making between survivor and victim? Oh, of course, absolutely. And I mean, when you come to think about what survivors have done and how that the feminist movement, which is made up you know, of a good percentage of survivors, have changed the discourse and the law and the way we think about rape. Now, I mean, it wasn't long ago where rape was considered something you laughed about and no way could you take it forward to the police, and now you can. But I'm saying that this 
when we talk about empowerment of individual women, that is very important. But we need to also talk about liberation on a more macro level. And what would it mean to change the society such that our next generation of girls, our next generation of daughters, do not have to argue that they are victims or survivors? And my argument would be that we need to change the conditions of the world. We need to change the economic conditions of the world. We need to change who has power. And taking on the argument that slut is a form of empowerment is the way to do it, is to miss how power works in the society and power works in terms of those who control the resources and I think men along the slut walk must be shouting slut and we love sluts because men aren't going to be affected are going to love this idea of a slut walk well let's they find out about that way. let's find out Heather, it's not going to fact... shift their way they think okay, it does stand not by, shift Gail. the way men think stand by you've done one of these right mm-hmm what did men do when they saw you doing this? Um, I really encourage the people who are clearly misunderstanding a lot of slut walk to attend one and see what it's like. What because, will they see? Uh, they will see almost every representation of people that are there. People of different races, people of different abilities, people of different orientations. How do the men behave? Uh, the men who have attended have been incredibly supportive no, not and the respectful. men who attend, the men who stand on the sidewalks and watch. We didn't have a lot of men stand on the sidewalks and, and watch. Okay. We had a significant number of men who might have come with their daughters, who might have come with their wives, who might have come with their partners, who might have come as survivors of sexual violence themselves, who were supportive and recognized that we all need to work together to fight this. Women cannot do this alone. We need to work together. Go ahead, Gail. Can I ask you a question? If um, you are sort of on this walk and a man comes up to you and says slut into your face, do you think he's talking about you being an empowered woman when he calls you a slut? It's all about <laughs> intention. And as all languages, it's about intention. Somebody could say, I was assaulted. And somebody could say, I was assaulted. It's, it's completely about intention. And saying that language always means one thing is absurd. It is about intention. So what intention do you think his intention is? What do you think is in a man's to damage intention and is when he calls a woman and a slut? When I have, That's right. There have been a few times where I have been called a slut, and I have felt safe enough and confident enough in that moment to turn around and say to some idiotic individual, yeah, I'm in control of this. I'm OK with my sexuality and what I do with it. I'm a slut. OK. They have gone silent. And for me, that is really reclaiming my agency and power. Let me f follow up with Kate McPherson on that, because I wonder whether you think you know, female sexuality still being somewhat of a taboo subject in this society is at the root of some of what we're talking about here. Female sexuality is not the least bit taboo. Female sexuality is everywhere. It is, uh, and one of the, the difficulties I think that uh, young women uh, face and, and, and cope with is that uh, commercialized, exploited female sexuality is big business in our society. So I, I think that that um, uh, one of the the one of the elements of this movement and and this and this uh, campaign and this sort of reclaiming or reappropriating is to open up the possibility that uh, expressive female sexuality uh, there's a possibility for it to be expressed outside of the the constraints and the demands of. of consumerized, commercialized, um, exploitative sexuality. I guess, Susanna, by that I meant, you know, if you look at the high schools of, you know, this province, your state, wherever, uh, you know, y young boys talk about having sex in a way that is different from the way young girls do. Young boys look at y younger girls who have sex and they regard them perhaps differently than young girls who don't have sex. That's the, what I, re I guess what I was trying to refer to in the, in the notion of this being taboo. Do you think all of that is percolating just under the surface on this issue? Me? Yeah. Um, do I think what is percolating under the surface? I wonder, the, the notion of whether female sexuality is taboo in our society is part of what's making this discussion problematic. No, female sexuality is not taboo. Um, it is, uh, sex, sex is still taboo. Um, but as she was saying earlier, female sexuality is, is everywhere. I think it's in a, the, the feminist mo movement stirred the pot, and I think young women now are trying to figure out how they can feel empowered and independent and sexual at the same time. And I will give credit to the Slut Walk creators for attempting to answer that question. I don't know that this reclamation of any word, frankly, is is the answer. But this is part of a dialogue that's been going on for 10 to 20 years, which is if you spend hundreds of years oppressing one gender's sexuality, and then you finally kind of unleash it, starting with the birth control pill, 
um, what happens? And there's, it's confusing. That's why this, this discussion is an argument, because nobody knows the answer really yet of what empowered female sexuality looks like. They say it, it looks like the word slut. That's, that's their point of view. I spent a lot of years writing about the adult movie industry and how, how that represents women, and that's another point of view. So I think we're all, we're all trying to figure it out. Gail, you look uh, unhappy with that answer. Do you want to help us out here? Yeah, I think, you know, what, you know, they talk about female sexuality. What's taboo in our society is an authentic female sexuality that grows out of women's experiences, women's um, choices. Because what we have now is a commodified, hypersexed, you know, roboticized sexuality that has kind of replaced the Stepford wife with the Stepford slut. And you have this idealized image of what women should look like. And I think a lot of these young women who are buying into the concept of slut have never actually been in dialogue with an industry, the pornography industry, that is trying to shape and define not only male sexuality, but very importantly, female sexuality. And I think this reclaiming of the concept slut takes takes place outside of the context of the fact that most young people today are brought up in a porn culture. And until the feminist movement is willing to take on pornography in a way that doesn't buy into pornography, but that critiques it and sees it for the misogyny and the women hating that it is, until feminism can do that, <laughs> then I think reclaiming is nearly, it's a waste of time. Kate and it's Heather. Not happening. Well, I actually think some feminists have uh, taken on uh, questions of porn, and there's, a, as you know, a huge debate among feminists around censorship, pornography. Is it a possible to have a feminist erotica? So we know that that's a whole other question that we could, we could move into. I guess I'd like to say that, in, that while it is true that some young women may be engaging with um, porn as a main site of producing female sexuality. They're also engaging with other industries like fashion, like uh, um, movie, television, media. So I, th I think young women are actually sitting at the intersection of some very, very powerful sets of images. And I think what I hear from young women is that they are trying to grapple with that. They are trying to grapple with, uh, with uh, uh, as best they can, carving out some kind of autonomous, if not original or authentic, and I wonder people might debate the question of authentic sexuality, but an autonomous expression of sexuality that they can call their own. And I think that's where I think we need to give uh, credit to a movement of young women. That's my understanding. There are older women also involved, but it's generated by young women who are trying to figure out a way to express themselves sexually, to be proud of their bodies, to be proud of their presentation, while acknowledging that they're sitting at the intersection of these powerful forces. Heather Jarvis. Can I say what I say? Stand by, stand by. He Heather Jarvis, first, then we'll back to you, Gail. Yeah, okay. I think to address some of the things that have come up, the idea that there is one solution, I don't buy into that. There are many solutions, there are many expressions. Right now, feminism is sort of at a place around acknowledging such a variety of identities and forms of expression. And just as you were saying, there is a grappling process to do with this. But to speak to what Gail said, the idea that people engaging in this, in this dialogue are somehow you know, uninformed dupes of patriarchy because they haven't had these dialogues, that assumption is very problematic. And a lot of these ideas that are forming to say, you haven't had these discussions, you don't know enough, you don't know better, this is just a mistake, this is shameful, it's instilling shame. And a big part of this movement in, in Slut Walk is trying to fight against shame and saying who you are and what you do, if it is your choice and you feel good about it and it's consensual, is not shameful. Let's hear Gail and Suzanne on that. Okay, well, first of all, I said no one should be shamed about their sexuality. I mean, that, that's ridiculous, and I'm certainly not saying anything that, that would be a good thing. What I'm saying is, and I've just done a 12-state like, book tour in the United States, and I have spoken to thousands of young women, and what I hear are often women overwhelmed with trying to negotiate what it means to live in a culture where they are dating and having sex with men who have grown up with pornography. They are literally overwhelmed. They don't know how to negotiate it. I hear from women themselves who actually would feel like they're victims they've not gotten to the point for many women I meet who would call themselves survivors because then that is again a very privileged position and one I hope that we can make for more women to go from seeing yourself as a victim to a survivor. What I'm saying is that feminism has to begin to I think deconstruct male sexuality. We are so focused here on women and that is such a mistake because as we know when we study race studies we go and look at how whiteness works but when we're studying feminism we need to look at masculinity, we need to look at male sexuality and I think that's my... 
That's the issue I have here, is that this debate is taking place as if pornography and male sexuality and violence against women in the real world, is this is the juggernaut with which we have to negotiate. And I think women saying they, that the answer is calling themselves slut is to ne refuse to negotiate, I would say, with the bigger issues. Susanna. The more macro issues. Susanna. Um, I, I find myself in the odd position on this program of, of agreeing with Gail Dines on some of her topics. <laughs> Why is it so um, odd? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't expected to. I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, oh, well, you never uh, but know. But not all. But um, I think that that it is strange to have this um, uh, this this female discussion, and so far there has been little discussion of of male sexuality because what I often hear in discussions of this sort is this very sweeping stereotype of men as men are the ones who oppress us, men are the one calling us sluts, men are the ones slut shaming us, it's the patriarchy that's the problem here and also the slamming of police officers of oh you know this these, they're against us, they're, they're part of the problem that makes us victims and so I think there's, there can be so much uh, gyno love floating around the room in, in the, these kinds of uh, marches that it doesn't really take into account, as Gail pointed out, uh, male sexuality or broader societal problems. This is like, how long are we going to drag the feminist movement? It's like practically dying if, if the again. big <laughs> political, if the big political movement is a slut. Slut walk? <laughs> what is, what is that? That's feminism? Okay, stand by. Let me get in here A if I can because we're, we're down to our last 10 minutes and I, I'm delighted to say, Jacqueline Friedman, we've got you back ah. now. We're really sorry about the satellite problems we had there, but let me put this for, uh, quote to you first. Uh, we have a columnist of the Toronto Star, which is Canada's largest circulation newspaper. Her name is Rosie DeMano. She is always provocative as hell, and she's done it again. Let me read an excerpt of what she's written, and then, Jacqueline, I'll get you to comment first. But we do commonly dress to elicit a reaction, Rosie says, whether appreciative stares from men or envious glares from women. So let's not play the ingenue. A multi-billion dollar fashion and cosmetics industry depends on that yearning to look good, to look sexy, and to objectify ourselves. In truth, many of us have slut clothes in the closet for when we're in that particular mood. Could be a button-up suit one day, tarty fishnets and leather mini the next. It's all just role acting. What personality do I want to put out there today? That's Rosie DeMano. Now the question, uh, Jacqueline, is, is there anything inappropriate with having sexually provocative outfits or even a persona to put forward from time to time? Nothing at all. I think this conversation has really confused the difference between the sexualization that is imposed on women by the media and the culture at large and women's authentic sexual expression. And now, of course, there's an intersection between the two of those. None of us are free of being influenced by our culture, but there's a whole difference between women being treated as passive objects with no choices of our own and women expressing our sexualities in the way that we see fit. And we need to really, those, are, those two are opposites in my mind. The other thing that I want to point out is that the, the use of that, the fishnets that she mentions and the heels uh, is, is the most common reason that we let rapists go free. And I really do, I agree with Gail, we need to bring this back around to the rapists. What we know about rapists is that the vast majority of rapes are committed by a small, very small percentage of the male population who do it again and again. So this isn't educating all men at large. We have a, we have a small percentage of psychopaths who are enabled by the sexualized culture and then we excuse them. And the way we excuse them is that they say, oh, she was asking for it. Oh, what did she expect if she went back to my room? I remember when the Assange case was up, you know, one blogger very famously said about the women who went home with Assange, like, you, you, pay, you buy your ticket, you take the ride. And that's, that is exactly the attitude that Slut Walk is trying to get to the heart of, that we can be authentically sexual, we can be actors on our own sexual behalves, and that shouldn't be a, a reason to let rapists off the hook, because what, what happens when we let rapists off the hook is that they rape again and again, an average of six times each before they leave college. Okay. Heather, do you want to follow well, up on the Rosie DeMano comment? Um, yeah, I think that that, uh, we've I've, I've never taken a position that people don't dress sometimes to get attention. I think we all do, and the assumption that we never do is 
uh, uh, just untrue. We do, but there's a big difference between attention and assault, and that line needs to be drawn. And I think what I find sometimes quite frustrating about Slut Walk is, yes, we did take an approach that said this word can be reclaimed and this is an action that we are taking. It's not for everybody, but it can be for some. But some people have become so focused on this word that they are losing sight of the rest of the work that we are doing. We are calling into question male sexuality and trying to offer different forms of education and pushing different angles to bring this piece together. You know, this isn't as simple as you just need to focus on men and forget about women or just focus on women and forget about men and anyone in between. We need to bring these these topics all together to focus on them. And Slut Walk is doing a lot more than just talking about reclaiming slut. And why aren't we talking about those things? Gail, let me follow up with you on this. Uh, I guess the fact is one police officer in Toronto made this statement. You know, don't dress like a slut if you don't want to get into trouble. Uh, uh, that was the advice given to students on the campus of this university in the north part of our city. Uh, you know, I, I guess the supposition is that that's one person's voice, but he probably speaks for many more in the police forces across North America. Is that your sense of it? Are you speak I'm sorry, were you addressing that to me? That's right, Gail. Yes, yes. There's no question. I can tell you that that notion that women who get raped deserve it. And let me tell you again, and I bring this back to pornography, because if you're going to talk about male sexuality, pornography has to be front and center of that discussion. And that message in pornography is that women are sluts. You've got the good girls and the bad girls in pornography, and the message is you just scratch a good girl and you've got a bad girl who's really a slut. And I want to say something to Jacqueline that's very important. And I know you and I, Jacqueline, joined a feminist movement because we wanted to see massive social change. But where is our responsibility to these younger girls? You talk about you know, owning the word slut. What do you think about the 14, 15 year old girl? How is she gonna negotiate that? You can manage this. You know, you in your early 40s, a perfect, let me finish, a professional woman. So I would like to know if feminism is gonna be worth its name, it's got to not be about you. It's not a got to be about you know, upper and middle class white women's desire to have lots of sex. It's got to be about changing the conditions of the world for our daughters and you telling our daughters you telling younger girls that they should take on the name the name of slut and the label I think you are doing a terrible disservice to young girls in the name okay of let's feminism. give Jacqueline a chance to come back on that Gail I think you're putting words in my mouth I've never said that they should take on the word slut I'm saying that we should stand in solidarity with anyone who's who's being victimized by this word slut being used as an excuse to, to victimize them that slut is being used as a weapon against those girls and me and you probably all the time and that standing in solidarity saying if you're gonna call one of us a slut you have to call all of us a slut that is what what the slut walk is about for me I, I think if you'll see the record is clear that I've never in fact said that any particular person should claim the word slut. I'm saying that we must come together in solidarity and reject it as a weapon. We must say this word is no longer going to have power over us. We've just got a few minutes to go. Let's get Kate and then Heather in on this. Just want to remind everybody that the, the slut walk was uh, uh, taking place outside the main police station in Toronto. So it was very focused on taking up um, the, uh, uh, taking on the police to do more than just sort of apologize for a comment, but to rigorously uh, take on the education of their officers. Do you think that comment represents the view of the force in general? No. You think it might just be one bad apple, so to speak? Well, I think it represents the view of uh, many people in our society, and there's a certain percentage who are going to be in any institution are going to have that view. The fact of the matter is we count on uh, institutions like the police to do better than the average. And, and uh, you know, I, so I, think, I do think that there was a particular political strategy being put in place here, and we need to recognize that. Heather. I agree. I don't think it's the, the perspective of the entire police force, and I truly believe that this officer, as many have suggested, was trying to do a good job. I think that he was saying this, trying to, trying to help. Words came out just incorrectly, something like that? I think it's not even that they came out incorrectly. I think that this is what he believed. He truly believed that if you dress a certain way in this category of slut, then you bring this attention on yourself and you're somehow deserving or responsible. And people need to start making those connections. Let me get Susanna's view on that, because you, you are in a little patch of blue in what is one of the reddest states in America. How, how do these issues play out where you are? I have not the faintest idea. I, I don't hang out with sluts, so I don't really know. 
that's that's okay. quite a shameful thing to say. You don't hang out with mm. sluts. Does that mean they're less deserving of your time or attention it or respect? Mean, and what is a slut the anyway? The idea the that you think anyway? I was serious is hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's, I'm calling it into question. The, there Clearly. Is, well, Susanna, you, you have said at one point. So. Actually, a couple of you have said at some point that this is all about, you know, you privileged, you know, upper middle class white women. And this is an issue for you, which sounds like it's kind of an attempt to marginalize those who are bringing it forward. Am I wrong about that, Susanna? uh marginalize uh those who are bringing it forward i i, I just i hear i hear feminist studies graduate students looking for something to do i, I just think this is absurd I, that's what i think well it's no let, let me, me know tell how you, it works if, out let, let me tell you that to be honest with you if it wasn't for feminism none of us would be here today every single woman stands on the shoulders of all those brave women who went forward to change our lives and let me say something about the police force again it is absurd to suggest it was one bad apple anyone who knows anybody who has gone forward to try and bring rape cases and i have student after student who do this know for a fact that the police force absolutely has a kind of john porn user mentality in many cases that these women deserved it. I've had student raped, repeatedly throat raped, and the policeman turned around and said to her, mm, you're really hot though, you know. And I can tell you story after story. And this is not a few bad apples. This is okay. the institutionalization of the police. Forgive me, Gail, you have 30 seconds left. Kate, why don't you take it? Well, in addition, I want to uh, remind everybody that the Slut Walk is building on a long tradition of feminists trying to take back the night, take public space find strategies to get a society that systematically refuses to take uh, questions of sexual violence, to take it seriously and put it on the agenda. And uh, you've all been on the agenda, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> pun intended, I don't know. Anyway, thank you all for joining us out of town. Susanna Breslin, the journalist from Austin, Texas. Gail Dines from Wheelock College in Newton, Massachusetts. Jacqueline Friedman. Jacqueline, we're so sorry about the satellite problems, but you're, we're glad you hung in there with us from Boston, <laughs> Massachusetts. And here in our studio, Kate McPherson from York University, Heather Jarvis, co-founder, Slutwalk. Thanks, everybody, for your time Thank tonight. You.